Last week, we studied Ruth chapter 1, and we talked about what a single woman can do to prepare to have a great relationship with their future husband. You guys said you really wanted to hear the other side to this from the man's perspective, so this week, we're going to dive into Ruth chapter 2 and talk about five principles that can help a man develop into the type of guy that a Christian wife will be really happy with. Point one comes from Ruth chapter two, verse one. Now, Naomi had a relative of her husband's, a worthy man of the clan of Amalek, whose name was Boaz. Principle number one is that you have to become a respectable man before you even meet a woman that you hope respects you. A woman craves a man who has a good reputation. Before she even meets you, she wants you to have other things going on in your life. Meaning a lot of guys make the mistake of dreaming about finding a woman and then they create this fantasy in their mind where everything's going to make sense once they meet her. Basically, they're trying to make her the center of their life. She's going to be the mission once they meet her. And really, a woman does not want that. That's actually a big turnoff to a woman because internally, she knows she's not enough to be a man's everything. She doesn't want to be the center of your story. Rather, she wants to find a man who has a story, who has something going on in his life, and then she wants to come alongside of that man to support him and join him in the journey that he's on. She doesn't want to be the journey. She doesn't want to be the mission. She doesn't want to be his life. She wants to join him on those things that he already has in his life. Notice the language Boaz used about Ruth in chapter 3 verse 11 and how closely it matches the description that we just read in Ruth chapter 2 verse 1 about Boaz. He said, for all my fellow townsmen know that you are a worthy woman. Boaz was a worthy man before he met a worthy woman. If Boaz would have waited to try to get his life together after he met Ruth rather than before, it would have been too late. And likewise, as a man, if you really want to be respected and you want to attract that type of woman who wants that type of man, then again, you have to work on becoming respectable before you meet her and you want her to respect you. Point two comes from Ruth chapter two, verses two through seven. And you can pause the screen right now if you want to read through that passage for yourself. Principle number two from this passage is that a godly man trusts God's providence to bring about his future wife and future marriage. The terms God's sovereignty and God's providence are similar but also different. God's sovereignty is that term that ref refers to his power to accomplish whatever he wants to accomplish. Everything that happens in the universe was either directly caused by God or directly allowed by God because he can do and stop whatever he wants to do or stop. God's providence, however, is really talking about the purpose behind the sovereign acts that God produces. So when we talk about how God always has a plan or God always has a purpose for everything that he does, really we're talking about God's providence there where the, there's a purpose behind the actions. So from everything we can tell about Boaz, he was the type of man who was trusting God's providence when it comes to his relationship status. From the details we know, he was single, he was older, he wasn't a passive man. We'll talk about that in a little bit. He was a very active man. He had a lot going for him. He was a wealthy man and could provide for a lot of people, as we'll talk about. But for whatever reason, he wasn't married. And then when Ruth came into his life and she let him know she was interested, he was very proactive. All that to say, we can infer that Boaz was waiting for something special to happen before he felt released to go pursue a wife. Notice the phrase in Ruth chapter 2 verse 3, and she happened to come to the part of the field belonging to Boaz. I can imagine Boaz telling this story to his grandchildren. And would you know who just so happened to come to my part of the field? It was your grandmother Ruth. 
God brought her there and it was completely outside of my control. Now, I'm not saying that it's wrong for men to do proactive things. Like if they feel led by God to try online dating or just go out there and pursue a woman rather than just waiting for her to randomly come into her life, his life, like this happened with Boaz and Ruth, that's not the point. I'm not saying that's wrong. Really what I'm talking about is a godly man is willing and ready to follow God's plan rather than his own gut, his own desires. He wants to know that he's truly following God's will for his life, whatever that may look like for him individually. For Boaz, it so happened that he waited until he had this interaction and sign that occurred through Ruth, and then he became very proactive, but it was only until he felt that God was in this that he started acting. And this is what a Christian woman wants. She doesn't just want a guy kind of making it up on the fly, doing his own thing. She wants to know that this man is actually trusting God's plan for his life and pursuing her because the man actually feels like this is a God thing, not just his own thing. And of course, the woman shouldn't just defer to the man's own walk with God. She needs to be sensing that divine plan and hand in all this as well. But she does want the man to have that sense that, yes, God is leading me to pursue you. Point three comes from Ruth chapter two, verses eight through 10. Then Boaz said to Ruth, now listen, my daughter, do not go to glean in another field or leave this one, but keep close to my young women. Let your eye be on the field that they are reaping and go after them. Have I not charged the young men not to touch you? And when you are thirsty, go to the vessels and drink what the young men have drawn. Then she fell on her face, bowing to the ground, and said to him, Why have I found favor in your eyes, that you should take notice of me, since I am a foreigner? Principle number three for men is that you need to be very active when you sense God leading you to be active. Now, I'm not saying at this point in the story, Boaz was specifically pursuing Ruth in a romantic way. I think at this point in the story, as we'll talk about in a moment, it's more so Boaz is showing his character. He's making good choices uh, out of his uh, own character again, and not because he's just interested in her romantically. However, what does get often lost in the story of Ruth is that Boaz was really the one who made the first move. Because Ruth does kind of steal the show in Ruth chapter three. She does something very proactive as a woman and that kind of like takes all of our attention because that's not usually seen from women doing that. But again, if you notice what really happens, Boaz sees this woman in his field and he's the one who goes over there, talks to her, provides for her, shows his character to her first, and she's like blown away by this act of kindness and favor. Additionally, once Ruth did take that wise step as a woman to be inviting towards Boaz in chapter three, as you read further in chapter three and four, Boaz then just takes it from there. He doesn't need Ruth to keep reassuring him, to keep inviting him. That's a big mistake a lot of guys make is that you know, they want a woman to invite them to pursue, which is good and biblical and a woman should do that, but then they need more and more and more and constant reassurance. And that's a huge turnoff towards women. A woman should be, uh, you know, confident enough in herself to let the guy know somehow through her own way that she would want him to pursue. But if that guy needs this constant pursuit, you know, invitation. That's more like the woman is pursuing the man, and that's a huge turnoff. As Naomi said to Ruth at the end of chapter three, wait, my daughter, until you learn how the matter turns out, for the man will not rest, but will settle the matter today. And that's exactly what Boaz did. And then in Ruth chapter four, verse 13, it states, so Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife. So it was Boaz who took Ruth, not the other way around. So this is what Christian women want. Once God does lead you to know that it's time to do something, be very strategic and very clear in your actions. Point four comes from Ruth chapter two, verses 11 through 14. And principle number four is that you want to be able to treat all women with respect 
regardless of whether you're romantically interested in them or not. As you read this passage, it's clear that Ruth was not the first woman that Boaz was taking care of in a way and, and helping out. He This wasn't like he just saw her and then turned on the charm. Rather, this was Boaz's regular character. He was a pillar in the society. He was a good man. And there were other young women who were finding protection in his fields. His young men were disciplined enough to listen to him and to not sin against the other young women, which appears to be something that was commonly occurring in that time period because everyone was like, Ruth, make sure you stay at Boaz's field. Otherwise, you're going to get abused at other places. Now, of course, once Boaz decided he wanted to pursue Ruth in a romantic way, he did single her out. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with treating a woman right in hopes that she likes you romantically, that's not a wrong thing to do. But the point here is that if you have character before you pursue her and you're showing your character as a Christian man before you pursue her romantically, it's going to make your efforts towards her that much more genuine because she knows you're not just a player and you're not just trying to put on a good show because you want her. Rather, this is the type of good man that you are and this is coming out of your character. And point five comes from Ruth chapter two, verses 17 through 23. Principle number five is that she will like you even more if you are able to impress those people that she loves. Before you come into this woman's life that you're gonna pursue one day, odds are she already has an important community in her life. And of course, both of you will need to make sacrifices and spend less time with other people because you have a new romantic commitment and relationship that you just have to spend more time with this individual person. But as a man, you don't wanna come in and swoop in and try to steal her from the community that she's already living in. Rather, what you really wanna do is come in and impress the community that she's living in. And I'm not talking about vanity or people pleasing or just doing it for your own ego. Rather, what you wanna do is you wanna respect the safeguards that God has placed in her life before she's met you, ideally, hopefully, uh, she has good relationships with other men in her life, like her father. Maybe she has brothers, an important pastor. She has a Hopefully she has a good relationship with her mother or sisters or a niece, uh, uncle, aunt, all these other people, good friends, all these other people in her life that care about her. God has put those people there to help protect her and to to help her thrive. And so you want to be able to come in and impress them and show them that you have good intentions because this will help her feel confirmation. When she senses that you're a good man and then the people that she respects are saying the same thing, that's going to be that double confirmation that she's looking for to say, yeah, this is really a God thing because I'm not just feeling it myself. The people I trust are also confirming that this is a good man. If you missed part one, here it is on the screen and that's about the woman's perspective of this where we go through Ruth chapter one. And if you want me to keep going in this series, let me know in the comments below. Give this video a thumbs up. If you want me to go through Ruth chapter three and talk about the proactive steps a woman takes to be inviting towards a man, again, let me know.